Good morning, Wednesday morning, hope you're well, left the house in really good time this morning, I ended up walking and messaging a buddy, amazing how much having to concentrate on what you're doing slows you down, so anyway, good morning, Wednesday morning, 7am, Good morning, Mr. Burrell. I hope you are well. Good morning, Cindy. Hope you are well. Morning, Mr. Grant. Good morning, Nadia. Getting after it, buddy. I'm running a wee bit late, so let the group know I won't be there on time. There's my tree. I love that big tree. Such a handsome, big, masculine boy. There you go. Bit waterfall. Morning, Carol. Good morning. So, I don't actually know what number this is. Morning Nadia, hope you're well. Been enjoying your posts the last few mornings, having a catch up on Facebook. Um, making a lot of sense what you're putting up. And, um, <clears throat> okay, so I uploaded yesterday's vlogs to the YouTube channel thing and saw that, I think it's like number 80 or 81. I've almost got more videos up than I've got subscribers. <laughs> right, cool. So, and, on this journey for me, this personal journey that I've been taking to do this, there have been days where genuinely I just feel totally a blank and have no idea what to talk about at all. And this morning is one of those mornings. Um, ah, Tuesday night for Cindy, Canada. Hi, Daguay. Hello, hi, Daguay. And you know what, Cindy? I'm disappointed because um, I've just started wearing that uh, Argelite bear that came from Heidi Gwai and uh, you know it was sitting um, it was sitting on the table this morning and I looked at it and I went I have to put that on today there's a reason why I have to put that on because yesterday when I saw you online I thought I'm going to have to put that on and show the wee Argelite thing for connection um, to Heidi Gwai and your First Nations community that I have been very blessed in my life to have spent some time with you so thank you um, now, this morning's one of the mornings that, um, and then here you are online and I realise I've not wore it, so there you go. Right, this morning is one of those mornings that I just felt completely blank, and I was struggling like the first couple of miles of the walk, I was like, what am I going to talk about, what am I going to talk about, right, well maybe you just don't talk about anything, and you keep it short, and you just let it go, and I accepted that, and then the minute I accepted that, I started to have some thoughts. Now. I do not, I absolutely do not research these. I do not put any effort into them at all. I don't sit up the night before and create a PowerPoint presentation for everyone. Morning, Anne. Right. <clears throat> these are just rambling reflections of my thoughts. I don't know if they're right. They may need some work. They may need tweaked. They may need me to look deeper on them. But what I come up with this morning is what we're all absolutely terrible at. We are really bad at it. We have very little capacity for it. And that's connection. We struggle so much with connecting with ourselves, with a higher deity, a higher being, connecting with nature, and certainly connecting with another human being. It's really tough. But we're great at conflict. We're fantastic at conflict. You just need to turn the news on and look at the amount of conflict that's in our world. We are fantastic at that. We're absolute, you know, A+. Plus. A+, plus winners in conflict. I love conflict, right? Well, is it you that loves conflict? Or is it an egonic part of your mind that thrives on conflict versus connection? Because what does true connection really mean? This is just me rambling. I don't actually know. I'm just making it up as I'm walking along, right? Connection means that I can completely and utterly dissolve any sense of who I am and allow myself to connect with you. To be totally present in my own body 
and let go of all my own narratives and let go of all my own schemas and let go of my ego so that I can fully allow myself to immerse in the inner world of a significant other person. See, even as I'm talking like this, it's terrifying. We are so bad at connection. We really, really are. Now, where does that stem from? Well, I don't really know and I'm just making this up. But yesterday, I was speaking about attachment and attunement and mirroring between the caregiver and the child, right? And I had, a, I had one private message um, that I got into a wee chat with somebody about what that would have meant for them, right? So if you're watching, I did pay attention to our chat, right? We, we, we got into a bit of a dialogue about that. Now, I value the metaphysical world, um, I value a realm of spirit. I, ra I value a spiritual world, right? And I probably always have, and I've always known that there's something out there that's other than myself. But that's the thing that makes human beings unique. The things that separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom is that we can um, imagine an invisible entity that's higher than ourself, right? Now, again, I've got no evidence of this, so I don't know if it's real. But what if our first attachment, right? These are just thoughts. I mean, this isn't academia. This isn't... Um, um, you Please, really, do your own research, right? I've got to say that. Um, these are just my rambling reflections, right? I'm just giving you an insight into my inner world, right? Being creative through lockdown. So what if... What if... We don't have a soul in our body and we actually have put a body in a soul, which is pretty matrix-like. It's like, what if we weren't born into this world and that this world was actually born into us? What if our first trauma, our first disconnection was that to our spirit realm, that to our soul, that to our spiritual world, our heaven within, whatever you want to call it, nirvana, that place of oneness, that place of inter interconnectedness and free of all shame, free of all guilt, where there is only an expression of love and complete and utter understanding for every other energy that surrounds you, right? What if that's the case? And then you come to this planet and the very first breath that you take when you come into this world is an in-breath and the very last breath you'll take when you leave this world is an out-breath. This cyclic, secular, pattern-revolving world that we then do our best to navigate, mostly exhausted, by doing a job that we hate, completely and utterly um, voiding ourselves of any pleasures where we feel completely lost and totally disconnected. Right? Just throwing some thoughts out there to have a think about, right? But what we can study, what is real, because the metaphysical world is less than real, the quantum reality we're starting to scientifically understand, but it's very new, and lots of people are jumping on the quantum entanglement theory bandwagon right now, but it's still a very new theory. So let's hold back a wee while before we buy into that. But what we can study is the relationship between an early child and its parent, right? And as I said yesterday, what if that parent was a drug, drug addict or an alcoholic, was emotionally unavailable because of their own trauma? Maybe your parents came back from the war. Maybe your parent had post-traumatic stress disorder. Maybe your parent fought in World War I, II, the Falklands War. Afghanistan or Iraq and you can't be physically present with yourself so there's absolutely no way that you can be physically present with your children and that child doesn't get a sense of who you are which then in turn doesn't allow them to get a sense of who they are right so why am I babbling on about this connection we are really really bad at that we are absolutely terrible at that. And in actual fact, conflict is our main go-to. We value conflict more than we do connection. 
Now, even if it's not an external conflict that we've got and we're out um, being secretarian or racist or following political parties where we brand the other one as wrong or not suitable for the post and highlighting their failings. You know, the battles, of all the battles that have ever been fought by man, the most arduous by far is the one that we have with ourselves. We have an inner conflict which has been pre presented to us through philosophy and scripture, uh, biblically, it's in the Quran, it's in Buddhism, and even I've started thinking a lot more since I did that little vlog on yin and yang, because I'd kind of rejected that symbol, judged it, happy symbol, yin and yang, you know, let's get that tattooed my arm after a rave, right? But what if, what if someone attempted to describe energy, that psychedelic realm, that psychedelic world of bending and movement, devolved of any ego where your ego dies and you surrender completely wholeheartedly to your heart? What if 5,000 years plus ago, the Bible was attempting in an early language to describe energy, the formless, the quantum world, a world of dualism, the battles that we all face while inhabiting this human experience. We value conflict because that's what we are. We are in conflict. We are in conflict with ourselves because there is always two opposing forces at work within us. Do I feed the devil on my shoulder or the angel on my shoulder? Right? So as long as there is duality, the conflict within ourselves, there can never be connection. You can never connect as long as there's duality within you. Because in order for true connection, heart to heart, there has to be a place where your ego does what dissolves completely and you lose any sense of who or what you think you are. Now, that's really difficult. Don't know how to do that yet. Working on it, so I'm just thinking about it now, right? So, what if we've got these two energies that are within us? And what if we are at a time in consciousness, a time of evolutionary consciousness, which is not new. It's not that we're in some golden age and we're some, you know, um, privileged individuals to be living in this time. Consciousness in our universe has been expanding since the Big Bang. It's been growing and changing and we're just in a moment in time. We're not in any better moment in time. We're not in any worse moment in time. We're not in some golden age where we get the privilege to be in the age of enlightenment. We're all enlightened beings, right? Loads of folk are making a load of money out of talking about that stuff, you know? Um, we're all enlightened. <laughs> we're all awake, man. Let's wake up, right? Cool. Well, let's stop talking about it and get on with it. Let's get our hands dirty. What's it going to take to do that? Well, it's going to take to do that is letting go of any constructs that we think we know or we have the answer because the first step is accepting that we do not have the answer and that we know nothing. We are actually very, very vulnerable. We're a very vulnerable species. And, you know, how does marketing work? How does advertising work? How does psychology even work? Because very quickly we've got to discover what is the need what is the need of those individuals, those students that we're teaching, those clients that we're working with? Facebook, people all want connection, they all want to know each other's business and they love airing their washing in uh, public, right? They just love airing their dirty washing in public, especially the Scottish, right? Give them super fast broadband and give them hundreds of, ma hundreds of Facebook because they just love telling the world what's happened to them, right? Right? They love the melodrama of the Scots. Now, Connection. How do we get a felt sense of connection when we're living in duality, we're in constant, constant conflict with ourselves, let alone the amount of conflict that's in the external world, look at the amount of conflict that's in the internal world. 
And look at and think about when was the last time that you truly connected with another sentient being, another another being? When did you connect with another person, right? Well, for me, and the reason that maybe brought this conversation around was it was last night. Um, a friend reached out for support. They're struggling. And I just made myself 100% available to them. I connected completely with them and let go of any of my internal narratives and who I thought I was and what I was all about. And I just extended myself through service to give myself to them. Right? And that felt great. Connection feels great. But there's a dark side to connection. It also made me feel very vulnerable it made me feel it was painful it's actually painful to connect and also when you do do that connection and you start to feel that amount of love that's generated between you and another human being you judge it or you think about it and you might put a sexual interpretation on it or you might put a oh what's the meaning of this and we start to analyze the feeling and we might jump into something that's not meant to be because of that feeling when all that's meant to be there is innocence and giving and connection. So when we do connect, it's not a simple task. When we reconnect to the mothership, that ship of love and understanding, we let go of any sense of control that we think we may or may not have had, that illusion of control. Now, for somebody that didn't know what they were talking about, I'm rambling away quite a bit today. Connection, we're absolutely terrible at it. What if in our community we could just be there 100% fully in our hearts, okay, for the needs of other people? What would that look like? Devoid of any ego. Now, you can never get rid of the ego and there's a lot of new age stuff getting branded about, about, I just get your ego and fuck, mate. Just bang your ego out the window, right? It's not going to work. The ego's got some fabulous qualities around about motivation and drive. But it's also got some pretty selfish um, attributes to it as well. So rather than trying to get rid of it, what would it be like just to accept that, that we live in this conflict? We are conflicted. We're conflicted human beings. We're conflicted to go one way or the other. But what came out of the conversation last night which I thought was very prevalent, which I'll share is, wherever you put your attention, it will grow. And you can bring flowers back to life. You can bring your garden back to life by the love and the intention that you put towards something. Now, if you're feeling anxious or you've got a bad feeling, or you've got a mosquito bite on your arm, which I keep referring to. And I've just noticed, because I'm looking in the camera, how hairy my face has got. Good God. That was another mad challenge. I don't like having hair on my face. I like shaving. I actually really like that. And a guy yesterday gave me a great metaphor. I was chatting to a dude Willie on this. It was brilliant what he said to me. He says, I shave every day. Well, I used to, Willie, and I actually really like it. And I want to get back to it to use your metaphor. He says, when I'm looking at myself in the mirror every morning, he says, and I'm shaving the bristles away. He says, they're yesterday's bristles and they're gone. I just loved that. I thought, that's cracking. Brilliant. South Lanarkshire guy, no bullshit. None of your American rah, rah, rah. Right in there and about it. Says it as it is, a spade's a spade. Love it. Anyway, I forgot what I was talking about there. Because I clocked my hairy face. Tried not to look in the mirror. No, I want to go up the road and shave it off. Um, connection. Conflict, that inner conflict. You've got a mosquito bite. You're scratching it like crazy. But then something comes along that's more interesting than your mosquito bite. A friend comes in, brings a meal, you share a meal, you laugh, you joke, you have a bit of a carry on. You forget about the mosquito bite. The minute that they leave and you're back in your empty apartment, your empty property, just you and the cat, you start to scratch the mosquito bite again. So when you're focusing on your anxiety, all you see is anxiety. And you can get to a narcissistic, narcissistic omnipotent point with that, that all you're focusing on is your anxiety. 
and you're sitting in a room having a conversation with somebody and you cannot hear a word that they're saying, that may look from the outside world that you're self-absorbed. Well, yeah, you're self-absorbed with a feeling. And by jings, heavenly, I've been there, oh boy, for sure, right? Heavily invested in what's going on inside. Because wherever we look, whatever we see, it grows. So it's up to you what it is that you want to walk along and walk towards and pour fire on. Now, if anything that I've made sense, when we are in conflict, we live in duality, we live in a dualistic world, right? We also inhabit a separated field of consciousness. And the journey back to a more unified field of consciousness would mean connection. But the paradox of that is, as we reconnect, we also have to burn through the feeling and the pain and the trauma of why we disconnected in the first place, right? That moment of realisation when you're a kid, right? Hola! Right? Hi, Laura. I've missed no talking to you or seeing you around. I hope your arm's well. I hope you can make it down to the river one day. Oh, here's this bit. My dog's going to get in conflict. Right, right let's show you the conflict. Right, guys, he's going to be in conflict. There we go. Oh, there you go. That's the first time in... Oh, a wee, maybe a wee nibble. You just want to play, don't you? Really? There you go, so the conflict stopped. Oh, that's it. Isn't that amazing? That's the first time... Themselves. That's the first time in three months that they've not chewed each other's ears. Yeah. Fantastic. Have a great day, guys. Right, right, you take right, care. Right, right. Oh, 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 wee bit of conflict. <laughs> that was funny. My two dogs have met every morning. Never really gets on, gets, uh, does a disagreement with other dogs, but... Him and this other wee guy's been having these real tiffs. And then this morning when I'm talking about conflict, I went, oh, here's a conflict going to happen. There wasn't any conflict. Bizarre. Right, so what you focus on grows. The intention and the effort that you put towards it, and that's both positive and negative, and the brain doesn't know the difference between positive and negative attention, or indeed reward, as long as it's getting rewarded in some kind of way. Because we are a huge biochemical factory, that every thought that we have gives us some kind of sensory pleasure through the chemicals of which is released into the bloodstream, right? And how we start to manage that internal biochemical factory is our responsibility. And do you want to feed connection or disconnection? And start to have a wee think about that. So for somebody that didn't know what they were talking about this morning, I haven't half rabbled my wee heed off, but... I'm terrible at it. I am absolutely shit at connection. I'm getting better at it. And maybe having this wee talk for the rest of my walk, I'll have a further think about it and how I can surrender further and live more in a connected way with myself so that I can live more connected to other people and let go of even more conflict. God, there's so much conflict inside me. Right, how much more do I have to deal with? Right? You know, I've been in therapy for 27 years. Right? So, aye. The melodrama. Have a great day. Have a really blessed Wednesday. And um, I'm excited to see what the day brings. So, you take care. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And uh, be safe. And give a little more than you get. Stop taking. Start giving. And um, even open your awareness up to others that give in the premise to get. Those buggers that set themselves up as a giver, but in actual fact, all they are are takers, right? And I'm starting to see a few of them in my world, as me and Mr. Grant spoke about yesterday. If only the masses knew how manipulative and dark and self-centered the human beings can be. Have a great day. Wish you all the very best. God bless. Take care.